Hello class, this is Dr. Dan. In this video, I will briefly go over what a box plot is and describe some of the features of a box plot, as well as just very briefly explain how you would describe this information when you write it up for your week two assignment. What we have here in front of us is a box plot displayed after doing the procedures for the assignment. This is one of the box plots that you will generate. And if you review over the information in the textbook in chapter three, you'll find that there is a detailed description of all of the parameters of a box plot, what they mean and so on. So I will not go in, into those details in the um, great extent here because you can read about those, but I will explain a few things. So first off, the features of a box plot include median, percentiles, interquartile range, extended range, and outliers. Again, all of those descriptions are within the text. We'll point some of those out. What you have here is in the box plot, right in the center, that is the median. The median, very simply described, is you can think of median as middle. So you have an upper 50% range, and a lower 50% range on either side of the median. If you look over here at these numbers, the median is right approximately at about 2, 2 or 2.1. Another part of the data that you generate will actually give you those numbers and you should report those numbers very specifically in your paper. So that's the median. The 25% tile that is above and below the median, so the you, you could say here the, the middle 50% is located within the box. Then what you have is from this 75th percentile mark right here, all the way out to this far extending outlier, that's where you have this, this uh, upper 25 percentile and then this lower 25 percentile would go from the lowest outlier, which we don't have one here, so it'll extend from here to this mark right here. Again, all those terms are very accurately discussed within the textbook. I'd just probably boggle you down with too many, too many percentiles if I said it all here within this presentation, but that's what that, are, that is. Then what you have, these are called whiskers right here, and finally your outliers. A feature within SPSS of the outlier is this number right here. So what you have is, here's the outlier, as a number 30 next to it. Well, if you actually go to your data, so in this example, what we will do here is we'll go to our data. We're looking at the HTH 507 data, so I find that on our spreadsheet. And then I go to the row number 30, and if I look at that, it's 4.8. And if you actually look on, on this uh, group of data, you can see most numbers are 1, 1.6, 2.2 in that area. So you can see 4.8 is really kind of out there. It's, it's pretty original compared to the rest of those numbers. Um, we're not sure just looking at it if it's an outlier, but it appears to be one. Well, then looking at our box plot, we can plainly see that that is an outlier. So that's what that is for. And then I actually noticed here, this 3.5 looked pretty high as well. I thought it was an outlier, and sure enough, that's represented in number 29, so row 29 right there. So I can see that's an outlier as well. So that way, if you wanted to know those exact numbers and review over them yourself, you could actually go to the data set and see that on your own. Finally, what you can do with this box plot right here is if I right click on it, I'm able, I am able to actually copy that chart and I can go ahead and I can paste that within my manuscript, within my paper. And then as I'm typing out the informa information about this box pot and reporting on it, what I can do is go ahead and I should report those numbers specifically. So as an example, if I'm talking about the median, you need to report what the median is. If I'm talking about various outliers, I should report what those are. So it's one thing to just describe and say that this is a box plot. It's another thing to describe the box plot 
in greater detail and say what the actual numbers are. So you definitely want to do that. Finally, if I go ahead and here is my various information that I've generated, including some histograms, another box plot, and what you can see is I also generated the descriptives and those descriptives will give me the information that I need so I can report on the median and so on. What you do not want to report on is information that you are not sure what it is. So if you report on the range, for instance, you need to explain what the range is. If you report on, on, on anything really, on variance, whatever it is, the median and so on, you should really describe just in a sentence what that is. It's one thing to report on it, but we also want to make sure you understand what it actually means. So hopefully that will help you understand uh, what a box plot is and what the information means. Again, I didn't go into the great detail on it because, the, again, the textbook clearly explains what that is and how to generate that information. In future weeks, I may go into some greater detail on exactly how to generate it or perhaps if students have troubles generating this, after the assignment is completed, then I can go into some greater detail. But for now, you should be using your textbook as a guide on how to do that, as well as your assignment provides some pretty detailed descriptions on how to generate this information.